Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. In this episode, we're going to take a look at um, how to just make a travel photo look better. Now, um, if you're new to Lightroom, Photoshop, and the photography plan, this will kind of give you some, some of the things you could be doing with your photos. Even if you shot landscapes or a city scene and it kind of looks like, well, you don't really need to do much to them, they look okay. There's always something that can be done to a photo that can make it look a little bit better. So that's what's going to separate your photography from being just average photography is going to make it or take it to the next level. So with that said, I've got a scene here that I shot um, last weekend in Amsterdam. So let's let's look at it uh, full screen. And looking at it, well, it looks okay. It's not spectacular. And that's the thing. We want our photos to look better. We want them to look as, spe as spectacular as they possibly can. Now, what's great about this photo is I've got some nice dynamic range. I shot this with the Nikon D810. I believe this was about an eight second exposure. Um, I used a makeshift tripod. There was actually a chair nearby and I just set my camera on the chair and did it. And uh, so I captured some nice blue sky. Uh, this is the canal, the water there has looked great. But then if I start looking a little bit closer, I can start seeing things that are bothering me about the photo. Number one, kind of probably the way that the camera was leaning on the chair, it's making the buildings look like they're leaning a little bit as well. Also, when I look over here, I see this kind of cable or wire going from this to this, and it's like, well, that's starting to distract me. And while the water is nice and calm, um, we can make the reflection look even better um, from the lights onto the water. So these are the kinds of things, again, that will, if I were to post this picture, people would just say, oh, nice picture of Amsterdam. But if we post a picture that's just had a few things done to it, it can go from being just okay to wow. And again, I just noticed, just, I hadn't seen this before, but I just noticed another wire up there. So just getting rid of distracting things in your photos can make it look that much better. So first and foremost, while I'm in um, Lightroom, I like to do as much as I can inside Lightroom as well. So I'm going to head over to the develop module with this photo. And once I get into the to the develop module, one thing I can fix right off the bat with this photo is, and again, one of the most distracting things is the buildings leaning in to the right. So I'm going to just scroll down until I get to the lens correction area where we've got the upright feature. Now I can play around with the different modes here, but I just like to try auto right off the bat. And if I just click auto, it will make the adjustment to the photo. That is so much better because now the photos look upright. They look, or the buildings look upright. They don't look like they're leaning or about to fall in. And that's the way they really look. They don't look like they're leaning or falling in when you're there. The next thing I can do is, uh, or the next thing I would do in Lightroom is while I'm here, uh, I always like to go ahead and do a little sharpening. So there's a general preset uh, for sharpening scenic and one for faces. So the way I usually tell people is if there's a person in it, use faces. If it's not a person, use scenic. So scenic can be landscapes, buildings, cars, anything that's not people, uh, product shots, whatever it is. Okay. So then we head over here and we look in the histogram and I can kind of see where I'm losing a little detail in the shadows. It's not too bad. As soon as I hover over that triangle, it kind of shows me in blue where I'm losing a little detail there. And again, those are in areas that I wouldn't care about anyway. But if I needed to fix that, you'll notice that when you're hovering over this histogram, uh, it will show you uh, as you hover over each section. I'm in the blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. So I'm clipping shadows and I'm blowing out some highlights. So let's go ahead, and by the way, if we want, we can see um, that this was an eight second exposure, shot with, at 28 millimeters, ISO 500 and uh, F5.6. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, zoom back out and just drag this over. Too much, not too much, not too much. It kind of jumped on me there, it went all the way over, until, it, until the blue goes away. In other words, that was just enough of dragging the blacks over until uh, the clipping was gone. Now, in the highlights here, I see that it's really only being blown out in the windows where there's a lot of light. So that's really not something I need to fix because there's no detail there. I can drag that slider all day long and there won't be any detail regained in those lights. But if you need it to, if it was in an area you cared about, you would just go the opposite direction and kind of tone down the lights in those windows until the red went away or in other areas of the photo where it did matter. All right, so um, the other thing I would like to do, especially on landscapes and especially on travel photography, 
is you have my favorite three sliders here called presence. Clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Now, normally if it's a person, I typically only do vibrance. But if it's a landscape or something non, that's not a person, then I usually crank up the clarity. It just gives the photo a little bit more punch, makes it a little look a little bit sharper. I also punch up the vibrance, just makes the colors more vibrant, especially with what we're going to be doing to it in just a few moments. And again, uh, look at the sky. We can make that sky a little bit more saturated just by dragging over the saturation. Now, this was shot at ISO 500 with a good camera. So there's probably not a lot of noise in that sky. But if there was some noise in the sky, then I would come down to detail and I would just put in just a slight amount of noise reduction to kind of counter the amount of noise that you might see visibly in the sky. But we should be okay with this. Uh, and here we can actually scroll down and see the difference. Uh, you get a nice big preview there. And we can see the amount of noise and what the reduction would do. Now keep in mind, the reduction in noise is also going to make your photo a little softer. So we don't want to use any more of that than we have to. All right, so now we can say, wow, we've done a lot. We've, we've gone from something that was just okay to even making it look just a little bit better in Lightroom without having to do a whole lot to it. But let's take it to the next level. Let's head over to Photoshop. So I can get to Photoshop a couple of different ways. Um, my favorite way is from the keyboard. I can go up, just hit Command E on Mac, Control E on Windows, and that will tell it to open that photo in um, Photoshop. Now, notice it's reading it as a raw file. Therefore, it is not um, making any changes to the original raw file. It's really kind of opening a copy. And when you do anything here and save it back, it's going to save it back in either a TIFF or PSD, depending on your Lightroom preferences. Okay, so now that I'm here in Photoshop, I can do more things. Now, I could have gotten rid of the wires maybe with the spot healing brush inside Lightroom, but since I knew I was going to Photoshop anyway, um, I like the spot healing tool in Photoshop for this kind of work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make my brush a little bit bigger, and we're just gonna go ahead and just heal that wire right out of the photo, just like that. And since the other wire got cropped off with the um, with the adjustment for upright, we don't have to worry about that one. Now, the next thing I want to do here, and the reason, real reason I came over to Photoshop is to make this reflection look better, to make it look more artistic. So for this, um, I'm going to use a technique um, that we use all the time in, in reflections, but I'm going to add a little special sauce, a little Adobe magic to it at the end that I actually learned from another photographer, Michael Boucher, um, in, in uh, Amsterdam. He was actually showing some of his HDR work. He's a phenomenal photographer. He's also um, a Nikon ambassador, and I'm going to do a final tip that I learned from him. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and do what I would normally do. So let's go ahead and make a selection. And we'll make a selection just of the top part. This is the part we want to reflect. Now, this is kind of tricky because, you know, where do you stop? Do you go all the way down to that building on the left side or do you stop here? And I'm going to stop here and I'll show you why that won't matter in a moment. Now that I made that selection, I'm just going to hit Command J on the keyboard. That will duplicate that selection onto its own layer. So that selection is on a layer all by itself now. Then we're going to free transform Command T. Uh, PC control T and we're going to do just a right click to flip vertical. So just turn it upside down and now holding down your shift key, you can pull it straight down. Now here's the problem. Notice it doesn't really line up because it wasn't straight across. And this is where we get to use some of the first Adobe magic to fix this and make it better. Um, now, also keep in mind, the next few things I'm going to do, we may see a progress bar because th this is a 36 megapixel file. So it's not just a little tiny JPEG. This is a big, huge file. And I want to keep all that detail and keep all that data so I can output this nice and large for a print or anything else I want to do. But let's go ahead and lock this in now. Uh, again, where to line it up? I'm going to line it up at the same edge where I cut it off in the selection. So just maybe right about there. All right. So we'll go ahead and lock that in. And now the other thing is I want to be able to do these things to this uh, layer non-destructively. So I'm going to go to my filter menu and come down to convert for smart filters. And that will turn that into a smart object so that any effect I apply to it will be done non-destructively. I can always turn it on, turn it off, 
and come back and make changes to any of the effects that I apply. So it's got the smart object icon on it now. And that means it's fair game for me to do anything without having to worry about damaging uh, the original pixels. So with that said, the first thing I want to fix is, well, I, this won't be a good reflection because the, the lines aren't matching. And the first thing I'm going to do is use Perspective Warp under the Edit menu to adjust for this. So with Perspective Warp, I'm going to drag out my first selection here to kind of go up to that next building. Now I'm going to drag another one going from that building over. And as soon as they get close enough, they will connect. And this is something I just learned. I didn't know you could do multi more than two. Uh, I just did this just for the sake of trying it, and it worked great. So I'm going to put in a third one, and it'll match up, and that'll make the selection. Now I can make the adjustment to teach Photoshop what the current perspective is. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this down and say, yep, that's kind of going down at that angle there. And I'm going to drag this down to here, drag this down to here, and then drag this one down a little bit more teaching Photoshop what these current perspectives are. Now that I've done that, I can switch from layout over to warp. And this is where that Adobe magic comes in. I can go ahead and say, I would love for these two to meet. So I can just pull that up to approximately where they would meet. And again, same thing over here. I can pull this one up to approximately where they would meet. Now, don't worry about the overlap. We're going to take care of that at the end. I know it's overlapping, but I'm just trying to get this to be closer so there's less of a gap in the water for what I'm going to be doing next. Okay, so, and we want to straighten that out, kind of keep that straight. And um, by the way, here's a tip. If you hold down your shift key, you can grab those uh, individual planes and move them that way. Okay, so now we got that in place. Let's go ahead and uh, lock it in. And again, uh, 36 megapixel file, it did the perspective warp very nicely. All right, so next thing we want to do, and this is where Michael's tip comes in. Uh, these reflections are typically blurred. And in the past, I would have done something like a motion blur. Well, we've got new blurs. We've got a brand new blur gallery with new blurs in it for Photoshop CC. So I'm going to go to my filter menu and use Michael's tip. Instead of using motion blur, we're going to use path blur, something I wouldn't have, wouldn't have thought of to try. And with path blur, of course, it's going from left to right by default. We're just going to pick up that right handle and turn it down. And of course, we can move it up and down, but it really doesn't matter because it's only applying it to that layer. Now I get to control from either point, either the left point, or I'm sorry, <laughs> now bottom point or top point. So top point, I can control the speed of it and kind of get that reflection looking more the way I would want it to look in the water. And same thing here, I can go to the bottom point and it's got its own speed control so I can adjust how long that reflection would look. And again, this is this will be to your taste. If it's too blurry or not blurry enough, that will be your taste as far as how much of this you apply. So some people might do go all the way and just kind of make it look totally blurry. And then some might tone it down a little bit to make it look a little bit more like it probably would have looked in real life had the water been going that way. All right, so now that I've done that, and here's where that progress bar is going to come in. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And, and Photoshop has to render this. And even though it's rendering it to a smart object, it still takes time to do all the calculations for all the blurs for all that amount of data. Again, a 36 megapixel file. I can only imagine what this would be like on the new 50 megapixel camera. So you'll be waiting a little bit longer. And uh, I'm doing this on the laptop, so the performance is still great for a laptop. And we're taking advantage of the GPU acceleration and all of that as well. So uh, we'll just give it a second. And uh, we'll come back and we'll take a look at what we're going to do next. And it looks like it just finished and that looks great. Okay, so now, of course, the problem is the blur is we lost the definition or the line uh, for the water line at the edge of the buildings. And the blur is too bright. So let's take care of these last two things. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is add a mask to our and we'll call it reflection layer. It's always good to name your layers so that you know what they are. So we'll call it our reflection layer and we'll just go down here and we'll add a mask to it. Now that we've added that mask, we'll switch to our brush tool. We'll make sure that we are on black paint or black color. 
and uh, we'll make our brush a little smaller and let's just go ahead and what this will do is brush that reflection off the buildings so we can get back our water line and just come down far enough to wherever that water line would be and keep in mind if you brush off too much you can always switch colors and brush it back on there we go that's looking more like the real thing would look because uh, the reflection this would be a nice distinct line because there's no water there the reflection would only be happening in the water not on the shoreline all right so i can see this is looking pretty good down here and i've come down too far because i want to make sure i got it all and let's make sure we get all of that and now to paint it back in we'll just switch colors and we can paint it back in for the areas where i came down a little too far there we go back in there and that looks pretty good again i can toggle back and get that all right so next thing we'll do is we'll tone it down a little bit so we'll go back to that layer and we're going to add a, an exposure adjustment to it now of course the exposure adjustment is going to apply to the whole photo so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say this adjustment only applies or to the layer below. I'm just going to clip it to that layer. And now I can just adjust the exposure down and kind of tone down that reflection because the water wouldn't be that bright unless it was being lit by something else other than those windows. So again, tone it down to taste. Uh, that's a little too dark. I would say maybe something right in that area might do the trick right about there maybe okay and now we can save it and once we save it that will um, of course take a few seconds to save because it, it again is now a bigger file with with that extra layer but once it saves it'll return it back to Lightroom and then once in Lightroom we can um, compare it to the original and see how far we've come just with a few simple adjustments from Lightroom to Photoshop and back to Lightroom And our save's complete, so let's go ahead and just close it. Head back over to Lightroom. And in Lightroom, it's going to put it right next to the original. So here's our original. Let's go full screen on that. That's what we started with. Without, you know, and this is what we end it with. Now keep in mind, the original, actually, it's not even fair because what we really started with, if we reset the original, let's reset it. That's what we started with. So now let's go full screen. So we went from a photo that was just okay the kind of one you would see on a brochure kind of one you'd see on a postcard kind of one that would make you want to visit that location and shoot this location so taking your travel photography to the next step with just a few simple things to take an ordinary photo and make it extraordinary take care and we'll catch you on the next one uh -huh.